Welcome back to the Muscle Physiology playlist. This begins our discussion of, of this week's topic. So in the last week, what we talked about is we talked about the physiology of the voltage-gated sodium channels, and we talked about how they are essentially what propagate the action potential along the muscle cell membrane. So this membrane right here, this is called the sarcolemma. It's the muscle cell membrane. In here, this is what's called the sarcoplasm or the cytosol inside the muscle cell. Okay, And the action potential literally is opening of voltage-gated sodium channels consecutively along the membrane of the muscle cell. But see, we face a problem that I talked about um, in earlier lectures in muscles. Okay, and that's the fact that if we want to essentially contract the myofibrils on the deeper parts of a muscle cell, then you have to somehow get the action potential into the deep parts of the muscle cell, into the deeper myofibrils. And the way we accomplish that is through something referred to as a T-tubule, and collectively they're called the T-tubule systems. So before we go any further, I want to just briefly just remind you about the action potential and how it's propagated. Um, keep in mind right here this gray part of the voltage-gated sodium channel. That's called what we call the voltage or charge sensor. And it's specifically sensitive to positive charge, i.e., sodium ions. Okay? And if you need review on this concept, go back to the previous videos. Okay, so this lightning bolt right here just represents we're talking about an action potential and I'm propagating it towards the left here and it's going to go down into the T-tubule system. And basically through some stimulus, and we learned earlier that initially it was the acetylcholine sodium channel and then later on the voltage-gated sodium channels, that the action potential is influx of sodium ions into the sarcoplasm. And so I think you have an intuition by now that I'm starting to get lots of influx of sodium ions, right? And so overall, I'm building up positive character around the voltage sensor of the voltage-gated sodium channels. And when the voltage-gated sodium channel voltage sensor senses that positive charge, the channel op opens and sodium influxes, okay? And so then I think you have the intuition that now, once again, you know, you have sodium influx right through that channel and some nearby ones. And I'm starting to build up positive character by the next voltage sensor of the next voltage-gated sodium channels. And so when this channel senses it, senses the positive charge, it opens and then sodium moves through. And then I think you also have the intuition that I'm going to get more and more sodium influx, right? And then this voltage sensor senses all that positive character. And this voltage-gated sodium channel opens, allowing sodium through again. And then you have the intuition that sodium is coming through here, right? And you start building up positive character around this one. And once again, sodium moves through. Now, this is where the physiology differs a little bit. And so you, you can have the intuition that... You know, this T-tubule system is going to go down way into here, right? It's going to go pretty deep into the muscle cell to penetrate the deeper myofibrils. Well, once again, through opening of this channel right here, you're going to get, in, you're going to get you know, a buildup of positive charge. But here's the difference now, is eventually you're going to get to a point where instead of activating another voltage-gated sodium channel, you instead activate what's referred to as an L-type calcium channel, Okay. And the specific one that I'm going to talk about is called the DHP receptor. And this stands for dihydropyridine receptor, although you're welcome to call it the DHP receptor. And it's an L-type calcium channel. And like the sodium channels, it has a voltage sensor. And when it senses that positive charge that came in from the action potential, it opens. But in this case, it allows calcium through. Okay, so calcium moves through into the sarcoplasm. Now, in skeletal muscle, which is what we're talking about, the dihydropyridine receptor is coupled to another type of calcium channel referred to as the ryanidine calcium channel. And the ryanidine calcium channel is located in the membrane of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. That's this organelle right there. And so what happens is, is the dihydropyridine receptor effectively, this is the theory, is it allows calcium through and it basically puts the calcium in position 
in the position to where there's a, another type of voltage sensor on the ryanidine calcium channel, but this one's sensitive to calcium instead. And so when calcium moves through the dihydropyridine receptor and activates the ryanidine calcium channel, then you have all this calcium that now leaves the sarcoplasmic reticulum through the ryanidine calcium channel. So all this calcium is now leaving, right? And it exits through the ryanidine calcium channel and goes ultimately into the sarcoplasm and what you get is a drastic increase in the concentration of your cytosolic calcium ions okay now notice through the use of the dihydropyridine receptor it was calcium influx that caused all this calcium release from the SR so the key is that you only need a little bit of calcium coming in through the DHP receptor to get a lot, a, a ton of calcium release through the ryanidine calcium channels. So this is an example of what we call positive feedback. This is what we call positive feedback. And the reason is because the more calcium that comes through the DHP receptor, you get more and more calcium that exits the ryanidine calcium channel. And this is what we call calcium-induced calcium release and that is release from the sarcoplasmic reticulum and that's because the ryanidine calcium channel senses the calcium that comes in from the DHP receptor it opens and allows a ton of calcium through and so what you get is a ton of calcium that builds up now inside the sarcoplasm and what we're going to find in the next video is that this calcium serves to activate it activates a protein referred to as troponin. And so what we're actually going to see in the next few videos is the, uh, the formation of cross bridges between myosin and actin and so forth. Okay, and ultimately the shortening of the sarcomere. But I hope this video made a little bit of sense. See you in that video.